Fund Supermart, your online gateway to unit trusts. We think the, the economic backdrop in Europe is, is relatively supportive. And we see that being um, illustrated on the ground when we're meeting companies, both in company visits in uh, their locations, but also in the office. And what we see is management teams um, uh, much more willing to undertake uh, M&A activity and also to invest in expansion capex. And that for us is, is really quite interesting. It shows a, a good degree of confidence uh, from management teams and, and also a belief now that the economic recovery in Europe is, is sustainable, which I think uh, is something that hasn't been in place uh, for, for many years. On the, the risk side, we see the risks mainly from a geopolitical perspective. Um, uh, that said, you know, we remain focused on you know, the best 40 to 50 bottom-up stock ideas across Europe, high-quality companies um, that we believe will be long-term winners over, over the next few years. The, our central case is that we don't believe uh, a hard Brexit will occur. We do believe there will be some uh, some kind of uh, some kind of deal. Um, what what we remain focused on is the the bottom up fundamentals of our, our businesses and the and the process. And I guess what we've seen over the last two years post the Brexit vote is uh, the process reflecting the the results and and that being reflected in the underlying composition of the portfolio. So our, our matrix, our proprietary quant tool, showing a decline in scores of more domestically facing names and conversely an increase in scores of more internationally facing names and we've reflected that in the in the portfolio so the uk composition overall relatively static slightly underweight relative to the benchmark but within that quite a big change in the composition to much more international names within our uh, uk exposure we think there remains some exceptional opportunities in european smaller companies one of the great things about the, uh, the, the benchmark and the index is that you know, we have a huge range of potential companies we can invest in, roughly about 1,000 companies. Now, we're only looking to invest in the best 40 to, to 50. Uh, there's always things going on in that 1,000 stock universe, things that are of interest, some fantastic growth companies. So we, we think there's lots of opportunity to, to buy these great high-quality growth companies that have good momentum over a long uh, time periods and, and the process is set up to identify those. So I think it is it's quite correct to say that smaller companies are generally a bit more volatile than, than larger companies. But some work that we've actually done in-house uh, had a look at the risk-adjusted returns of small caps against uh, large caps by geography and it showed pretty consistently and, and, and certainly within European markets that smaller companies on a risk-adjusted return basis have provided much better returns. So whilst they are a bit more volatile, the investor is being more than adequately compensated for that additional risk. Now, how we navigate volatility is really quite straightforward. We, we have a clear tilt towards higher quality companies and a long-term investment horizon, so very much a buy and hold approach. So we're not worried about short-term volatility. Uh, we're looking to buy these companies typically on a three to five year view, but, but actually much longer if the investment case stacks up. So turnover on the fund last year, for example, was around about 15%. So take a very long time frame in terms of our smaller company investments. So we have a, a tried and tested process that's been in place now for over 20 years, um, has a clear focus on particular traits that we look for in our smaller companies and a clear tilt towards uh, quality, growth and momentum. So high quality companies with good growth potential and, and good uh, momentum. Now, we are just trying to find the best 40 to 50 of these companies out of the 1,000 stock universe. So there's, there's always potential ideas. That said, it's a fairly stable portfolio, not huge amounts of, of turnover. And now, having a look at the sort of respective uh, small cap um, components in, in Europe and elsewhere, uh, what I'd say, you know, one of the attractions of developed Europe is the the high degree of accounting standards that we have, um, auditing regulations, and, and general sort of regulatory reporting that we find quite attractive in developed European markets. Allied to that, 
you know, the, the companies that we're investing in uh, will in many cases have a global exposure. So you're getting the benefit of, of high um, reporting, but also with a, a global economic uh, outlook. Uh, 